hi dear students welcome to yet another episode of micro shots guys in today's video i'm going to tell you about three important microorganisms who stay as tenants in the human nasopharynx and sometimes these tenants decide to trouble us that is they become the causative agents of meningitis so who are these now tenant number 1 is a gram positive diplococcus encapsulated and the shape of this focus is lanceolate or flame shaped Yes, you guessed it right. It is nothing but pneumococcus or streptococcus pneumoniae, as you can see in this picture. This is a gram-stained picture of streptococcus pneumoniae or pneumococcus. As you can see, gram-positive diplococci are there in this picture, and the halo which you can see around all the diplococci is representative of the capsule of this organism. All right. So that's one. Now the second tenant, as you can see in this picture, is nothing but Neisseria meningitidis or meningococcus as you can see in this picture it is plano convex it is also a diplococcus and it is encapsulated the name itself tell you tells you that is it is going to cause meningitis all right so meningococcus or neisseria meningitidis is the second tenant who resides in our nasopharynx all right and then the third tenant is this one as you can see in this picture uh this is actually hemophilus influenzae which is a gram negative cocobacillus but in this very picture of a gram stain prepared from the csf of a child suffering from hemophilus influenzae meningitis a lot of pleomorphic forms of this organism are seen and pleomorphism is being is exhibited by this organism in cases of meningitis even though we call it as a gram negative cocobacillus all right so these are the three tenants or the bacterial causes of meningitis uh, whose site of carriage is the human nasopharynx now imagine these three critters or bacteria are staying in the nasopharynx and they take a decision to trouble us that is they decide to cause meningitis now to be able to reach central nervous system and cause meningitis they have to travel to the central nervous system isn't it so before travel imagine they have got gps with them which they switch on and the gps shows them two important routes now listen carefully route number 1 is hematogenous route that is these organisms can simply jump into the blood stream from the nasopharynx and swim their way to the cns and cause meningitis and then route number 2 is is that these organisms can make their way uh, through the cribriform plate along the perineural sheath of the olfactory nerve now amongst all these three organisms both the cocci that is the pneumococcus and meningococcus they prefer route 1 that is hematogenous route in comparison to route 2 it's not that they cannot take route number 2 they can in some cases but preferentially they take route number 1 that is they more commonly you know prefer the uh, hematogenous route as compared to the cribriform route all right on the other hand the third organism or the third tenant of the nasopharynx that is hemophilus influenzae preferentially takes route 2 in comparison to route 1 So for Haemophilus influenzae, hematogenous route is less common. So H, that is hematogenous route, is less common for H, that is Haemophilus influenzae. So that's about this episode of Micro Shots. Please let me know in the comment section how are you liking this series, and you can even suggest topics for further episodes of the series. Please like uh, this video, share it with your friends, juniors, seniors. Smash the bell icon for notification for my future videos, and also follow me for uh, more microbiology and immunology updates on my Facebook page, Dr. Mamta Jawa, and MJ. Micro. That is my Instagram handle and Twitter also at the rate of capital MJ underscore capital Micro. Thank you for watching.